and we are back with another Black Window Cream podcast, new episode every single Wednesday and Sunday. I'm your host, Ben Haggerty, aka Ben Real vs. World, and today on the show, we have the one, the only, Ginger Beer Photography, aka Dave Fogarty. He is a longtime personal photographer for former two-time champion UFC fighter Conor McGregor. Dave has created a powerful portfolio of images documenting McGregor's fighting career, personal life, and rise to worldwide fame. He has been there every step of the way from McGregor's earliest fights to becoming one of the most iconic fighters in history. This dude has had some insane experiences. On today's episode, we discuss a range of topics such as Dave's hustle in Dublin, Ireland, shooting every amateur fight in the area while making a living at a family portrait studio, eventually getting the attention of Conor McGregor. He shares the strategies that he used early on to build trust with Conor, like carrying his camera bag with him everywhere he went so he could be ready at a moment's notice. Dave explains the day-to-day lifestyle of documenting documenting Connor's training leading up to big fights and his mindset of capturing iconic moments that will live forever in history, like Muhammad Ali. He walks us through his game plan when shooting a massive event like the Floyd Mayweather match, what cameras and lenses he uses, and how he maneuvers the arena to get the best shots. Dave tells stories of meeting Drake, Mike Tyson, shooting Amigo show, along with his future career plans now that Connor is retired, and so much more. This episode is dope as fuck, and I'm excited to have you here listening with us today, but check this out, listen up. This sound effect right here. From now on, when you hear that sound effect on the Black and No Cream podcast, you need to understand that that means that big news is motherfucking coming. Uh, this Wednesday, I'm gonna I'm not gonna give all the details right now, but this Wednesday we will be announcing a new contest. It's gonna be a video editing contest, and we have some amazing footage for you to cut with. Um, first place winner, whoever's getting first place, the prize is a 49 inch ultra wide curved monitor. It's like a thousand dollars. Second and third place are walking away with hundreds of dollars in Amazon gift cards. And we have a bunch of other prizes. I'm not gonna tell you everything. Just know that this Wednesday, Wednesday morning, you need to tune into the morning roast episode and listen to all the details so you can enter this contest because I wanna see all the video editors come out of the woodwork for this one, okay? I wanna see what you guys make. There's some big opportunities here. So get ready to tune in for that. But if you're new to the podcast, you're probably wondering, what the fuck is Black With No Cream? Great question. Black Window Cream is the illest educational resource for content creators fueled by caffeine. Or at least I take my coffee Black Window Cream, but you can drink or not drink whatever caffeine you fuck with and still be a part of our community. We have thousands of members from all around the world working together by sharing content, asking for feedback, passing tips and tricks along to one another with the goal of pushing each other to become the best motherfucking content creators on earth. And you can join our private group if you want to by going to bwnc.com slash join. We would love to fucking have you. Please join. Yo, this episode is going to be a banger, so make sure to take notes along the way. Write them down, post them on your Instagram story, tag at Black Window Cream so we can repost them. We can't wait to see what you guys say. And if you really are a fan of the Black Window Cream podcast, if you really love what we've been doing on this platform, join the street team by texting us, all right? We will be texting our updates on future episodes and ways that you can get involved to help spread the word about Black Window Cream. And, you know, we'll be texting you weekly uh, motivation and lessons that we're learning from each podcast episode. And literally, I'm just talking to hundreds of creators via text message, and it's been pretty cool to tap in with everyone. So uh, if you want to do that, the number is 319-209-9041. We also have a link in the description um, that will load up my contact way easier. So just do that shit, join the squad, and without further ado, I bring to you my episode with Dave in the most epic podcast intro ever created. Right, motherfucking now! Yeah. Yeah. Attention. If you stop this podcast recording at any time, you will die. I don't want to die. Do you want to live? Yeah. You have 24 hours to share this podcast with five people or you will die. I'm kidding. You won't die. You're just weak shit for not sharing. And the winner of the best motherfucking podcast goes to... Goes to... Black with no cream. What do you think? It's so fucking dumb and so fucking Ben Haggerty. I knew you would say that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Dave Fogarty in the house, aka the Ginger Beer Photography. What's up? What's up? How you doing, What's man? Up? You good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Just chilling. You're calling in Same from as everyone from Ireland right now, so we're we're yes, quite sir. quite a bit far from each other. <laughs> yes, sir. Dublin, Ireland, God's Damn. country. Yo, I got a bit of. Irish in me. Haggerty is my last name. Fogarty yeah, is your yeah, last yeah. name. That's interesting to me, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It always sounds like it's from this neck of the woods anyway. I think it is. A little O Haggerty or some shit like that. I don't know. I'm <laughs> terrible with understanding it all. But yo, hi, you've been good. Everything's been good. I know you guys were traveling a ton and, and, and you know, the coronavirus kind of puts you to a stop, but you've been busy in Ireland. 
Yeah, yeah. So we were, um, yeah, just like everyone, we were we were traveling and just getting into the into the grind of of twenty twenty, and then Corona came and kind of shut everything down. So kind of uh, slowed us down for a bit, but um, yeah, it looks like we're at the tail end of it over here anyway. So right. the world is trying to open back up. So we're kind of getting back into it. That's amazing. Um, I think that this, this is going to be a cool conversation just because from my experience, having worked with musicians and primarily and some athletes and things like that, but mainly musicians and, and music and you coming from the side of having worked with musicians as well, but uh, working with Conor McGregor, it's like shooting one of the biggest fighters in the world, right? And in that sport, it's just so interesting to me. So I feel like there's so many parallels that we would have creating, you know, on the day-to-day basis. But I feel like uh, there's just a, a complete mystery to me when, when shooting these people, because what's so cool about the way you capture content is you would just have full access to everything that happens off the, whatever the fuck that thing's called, the octagon. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, whatever. yeah uh, the octagon. Is it the octagon? Yeah, you just have yeah, unle- yeah, you yeah, have so much great access, and, and it's it's like history that you've been capturing. You know, it's really cool to watch. Yeah. Um, so I've oh, been a big cool, fan yeah. for quite a while, man. You've been killing it. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's been quite a ride. I have to get in to, into the studio one day and tell, tell the whole story, but uh, yeah, it's been it's been quite a ride that uh, that I've been on. It's been fun. Next time, next time you're in LA, we're going to do it for sure. Um, I think yeah, it'd be cool. Yeah, definitely. Maybe if we start with um, kind of how you landed your first, like the first opportunity with Connor and how you were able to like kind of capitalize on that to start building a relationship. Maybe if we started there, I, I know that you, you were a f- or are a fighter as well. And so yeah. I'm, I'm curious to hear how all of this kind of like, you know, obviously it's for the full story at some point, but just kind of like the, the nutshell of like how that all came to be. Yeah, so like the the short version of it is that uh, me and Connor trained in the in the same gym, but like we had no interactions with each other. Like I didn't, I never saw him, and he didn't really see me. But um, I was doing photography at the same time, so I was taking pictures of all like the amateur fights, and uh, so just by slowly building up my reputation and just going to like every single amateur fight I could, every amateur event I was at. Like I took all the fighters in the gym, like uh, I kind of, everybody knew me and that's where the name comes from. Like people go, oh, you know, Dave. And like, oh, which one is he? He's like, oh, he's a little, little ginger beer guy with the, with the camera. So that's where ginger beer photos came from. So I, um, so he just, he just heard of, just heard about my work and I think he'd seen it because like I'd taken everyone in the gym and uh, basically everyone in Ireland at the time, like if you're an MMA fighter, like uh, chances are I had pictures of it. Wow. So I, uh, he had just seen it and he just liked my work and, I just got a message off him one day on Facebook and just saying, come down to the gym and I'd sent him pictures. So I, I want to save it all for the, for the, for the full interview, sure. but I'd shot stuff for his movie. I gone, I filmed stuff for his movie. And, uh, while I was filming for the movie, I was taking pictures as well because, uh, cause that's what I really want to do. Like when it comes to video, I had no idea what I was doing, like <laughs> not a clue. Right. So I was like, I'll take, I'll take pictures while I'm there as well. So I was kind of doing the two and I sent him the pictures. And then he had seen, he had eventually seen the pictures and just wrote, wrote back to me and just said, hey, um, come down to the gym uh, for a week of training and we'll see how we get on. And that was like three, probably four years ago now. Damn. And I've kind of, kind of been with him ever since. Wow. That's ridiculous. Shout out to Facebook. That's crazy that you were able to touch base with him via Facebook. I feel like most celebrities yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't, like, aren't using <laughs> It's them. Facebook Messenger. That's the most random thing. I got in there early, I, like added him on Facebook when before he like filled up his Facebook before it became a page when it was still a person. Right, right, right. So, uh, so my message went through to him. I so, yeah, it, it was I love face, shout, out, shout out Facebook Messenger. When That's he an was old still school a person. <laughs> before people then they become <laughs> famous, they turn into pages, they like don't have a profile anymore. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was like your approach to, you know, you're getting in, you get to go to the gym. Uh, obviously, he's training and you're able to start doing a lot more photo work for him. What was some of the ways you were able to kind of build the relationship and like the trust uh, with him so that he could like count on you to be that guy for him. Yeah. So I, I, I just took it like, kind of like what it was. It's like, this is a huge opportunity to me, but I just treated it like I did with any job. And I was just like, I just was a hundred percent like so you could count on me. So like I'd bring my bag, my camera bag everywhere with me. I'd have it in my bag. I'd have it when I was like walking my dog, I'd have it everywhere. And he just hit, if he, I was like, if he texts me, no matter where I am, if he texts me or calls me, I'm going to go, I'm going to be, I'm going to be there ready to go. I got to show him that like I'm a hundred percent into this. So he just text me, go to the gym. And I'd be like, I wouldn't even text him back. And I'd just say, okay. And it doesn't matter where I was. I knew I'd have my stuff on me and I'd be at the gym. And 
nine times out of ten, I'm there about half an hour before him just because he's because <laughs> how he rolls. So he's like, be at the gym for ten, and I'm there at ten, and then he'll show up at eleven. That's but sick. I'll be there. I'll be there every single time. And then when I was there, I wanted to capture as much as I could to show him. Because I think he hadn't, he, it was when I started working with him, it was when he was like kind of building up his, his Instagram presence and he was kind of realizing the importance of social media and what it can actually do for, for him and like what he, like the image that he wants to put out there and everything it can do for him. So I was just trying to capture as much of it as possible and try and capture as much that he can use for himself. Mm. So that was just my, that was just my game plan behind it was just do as much as I can, show him what we can do with this, why it's important to have a photographer and what we can build together. Right. And that was that. And that, was, that was just my game plan. At the time, were you working? What What was like your job? Like, how were you creating income? Because I, I, obviously, like you said, it could just be a, at the spur of a moment, you're getting a text, be at the gym and you could be at the gym for 10 hours. So were you working other jobs or were you doing photography and like video work as a way to make income or what what were you doing? Yeah, so I um, I was I was working as a photographer. I was working freelance, and I was working in like a family studio, taking pictures of like, you know, like you, you go to get like your your graduation pictures or yeah. your baby pictures. So right. I, I was I was doing that like just just a way to make a living. Like I didn't want to do it like worst job ever, but that's what I was doing to make a living. And um, the so I, I was just so I was making a living doing that, but uh, it was flexible enough hours, and like I missed one or two days from. I was just like, yeah, okay, I'd rather take pictures of Conor McGregor like than go take pictures of some randomer's baby. <laughs> so, so that's what I was doing. I was actually working for him in New York. We we're in New York, and uh, he he was fighting Eddie Alvarez, and mm. I was like, it was like walking up to the city, and I got a, a, an email, and I clicked on my email, and. and the studio fired me. So I wasn't good enough to take pictures of, of these babies. They were like, Oh yeah, we've, we've kind of taught you all we, we can and stuff. So wow. I was just laughing. I was like, here I am in like New York. Yeah. Where he's, he, he was fighting for the, for his second world title. I'm like, I'm getting a, an email from this baby studio saying that, uh, <laughs> that, like, that I'm not good enough. So I was like, Oh right, yeah, cool. See you later. Have you sent them any of your work since then? No, I've, I've seen him though. I've seen the guy who fired me a few times. Really? And I like wanted to, oh, yeah, I see him just around like it, like, I was with my girlfriend in like a home exhibition. Like we were buying stuff for our house and I seen him and I was like, I wanted to go flex on him. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just go over and go, oh, look, 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 look at me now. Like, but I was like, ah, oh, we walked off the car. I was like, ah, oh. God, that's okay. hilarious. I love that shit. <laughs> um, I mean, what's so crazy, man, is that, like you said, you were already held in New York at that time. You guys, since in the last few years, you just traveled all over the planet. I'm, I'm sure like you see the traveling photos that you've shared. You guys are in like amazing places with fucking yachts or private planes and all this shit. You get to see so much. Um, when, when you are traveling and then, and then maybe preparing for a fight, life changes, right? A fight gets done and it seems like there's such a long period of time between when he would fight, right? Uh, as far yeah. and also remind everyone again from, I'll say it in the intro, but I'm a noob when it comes to MMA and all this stuff It's dope. I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but I do know yeah. that Conor McGregor is nuts. Right. So like when you see all that, uh, you good, stop good. and you prepare for like, um, like a proper training for an upcoming fight. And I'm kind of curious as to, you know, when, when he goes into go mode and he starts preparing for a fight or and maybe he's just always training like at a high level. Uh, but what is the day to day like for you? Like you said, you would just, he, he says, come to the gym and you come, are you there every day with him? Is the, are the days mad long? Like what, what's that kind of like for you? Yeah. So, so obviously I'm a big fan of the podcast and, um, so I've listened to, listened to all the, all the, uh, interviews. My so God. I hear a lot of people talking about the, the tour life and like, I can like, now I haven't, I haven't gone on tour with anyone, but it's like, I can a hundred percent relate to it. So it's mm. kind it's kind of similar. So it's like different every day, but every day is the same. So when it comes to a fight camp, um, generally, uh, six, eight weeks. So generally eight weeks. So Connor will train twice a day. He'll do one, one in the morning, one in the evening. Um, so they, they kind of change up every time. So it could be a skill based like striking or grappling or, um, anything MMA. And then the second session would be like a cardio. So like sprints or weights or just, uh, just cardiovascular. So, uh, he has a program that he follows. It's like the McGregor fast program. Mm. So he, so it's all, it's all laid out. So we kind of basically know what we're doing the, the morning session, if it's going to be cardio or skill based. So, um, so ahead of time, we, we just, because there's a whole crew, there's, I'm the photographer, he has got his, uh, a production company, Claymore Productions. So we handle all of it. So I do the photography with Darren McCarthy, who does the, his video. So like we'll touch base with, uh, 
we, we call him the doc. So he's the, the head of the cardio. So we'll touch base with him. He'll tell us, look, we're going to do this at this time, that at that time. Now the times can shift and change, but we basically know what we're going to get into. So one in the morning, one in the evening. So we'll go, we'll shoot it. I'll edit, I'll edit the photographs nearly like straight away before like he's in having a shower and I'm editing the pictures, having ready for him. So he walks out, send him the pictures. Then he'll go off. He'll have his food. We'll go, I'll go home, just wait around really. And then we know we'll go back in the evening then and we'll do the second session. It's kind of same thing. Um, just get, get them over to him as quickly as possible. Uh, let him have a look at them. Then, come home and like he might send me a few messages you know to, like change this like you know because he's he is very involved when it comes to the production company kind of very involved in it like when it comes to any aspect of of his presence he's very very like very involved in it so when it comes to the photographs he'll like he'll tell me oh like change this i don't like that oh, that's cool like get get more of this when it comes to the videos like we've been we've been places and I've, I've woken up and he's, he's in our room and I'm like, well, what, what are you doing here? And he's sitting down with our video editor going over what he wants to change. Like, you know, I want the video to look like this. So he is, he is very invested in his production company. And like, we're only getting as a production company, we're only getting off the ground, but we've done like, we've made, this is, his, he's got like two, two uh, series on TV. He's got his movie on Netflix. He's, he's in the process of making another movie. We've got loads of stuff going for the, on the still side. So he's, he's very, very invested. And in that's all through, productions. that's through his production company. They, all those projects are through his. They, yeah. Through his, they're wow. all, all, all kind of me. It's all Darren McCarthy and, and, and me. And um, so, yeah, his, uh, we're, we're just going from, from strength to strength and over the next, oh, it, yeah, over the next year, you're really going to see a lot more stuff being pumped out from Claymore Productions. That's dope. I, I, I love how, and it's cool. It sounds like it's such a small team as, as you guys grow this and try to learn what you're doing. But what's so dope is that you guys and, and him being so involved, you're creating these moments that will live forever, right? Especially with the photography, you're documenting these key moments that, like I said at the beginning, no one sees this side of him unless he's sharing it or unless there's like paparazzi or whatever reason. But like most of these intimate moments you guys are capturing. So like when you're going in there for a day to day training and that's eight weeks in a row, what are, 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 is he giving you guys ideas of what he wants to be releasing during that time is the idea that for the public, you need to know he's in the gym and he's getting ready for this. And, and that all adds up to the, to the pre-roll of this massive event. So you're specifically going in there and saying, all right, cool. He's doing cardio. I need to make him look like he is full fucking beast mode today and he's full beast mode tomorrow, but I want to try to find different angles or new ways to capture that. Are you guys setting up shots? Like how, how do you kind of separate and balance these day to days so that you're continuing the story? So I just look at it the way I, the way I view it is like, I just picture this, because like you're saying, it is history and he's like one of the most iconic sports people of our generation. Like right. he's one of the most iconic like, fighting personalities of all time. So the way I look at it is it's like, this is his Muhammad Ali story. Like, you know, how, how like everything that we do is going to be, it's going to be part of history. So I look at everything as that, uh, like that, like at one point, this is all going to be put down in a book somewhere. Like that's my end goal is I want to have a big epic coffee table book. Mm -hmm. So when I'm, when I'm shooting, that's, that's what I'm thinking. We're not really like he uses the stuff for social media and for like, he uses them for whatever he wants. Like if he's going to post them, he's going to post them. But I'm not really thinking about like social media and like, you know, how do we make him look a certain way? I just try and document it just as, as flying the wall as possible. Like the odd time I'll ask him to, to, you know, pose, like stand here, stand there. But most of it is just flying the wall document, documentary style is, is kind of what I tried to do with him. And then he uses, like, he's very savvy when it comes to social media. So right. he, he like, he knows, he knows what, he knows what to post, but none of it is ever like contrived or we don't try too hard. It's, it's really just, he is, he is who, who you see and what you see on social media is kind of like, he's, there's no online personality. He's exactly the same way he is in the gym or on social media. It's the same way he is at home or in real life. So yeah, it's, man, it's, it's good. It's, it's cool. Cause it's just, you're creating like timeless moments, right. And, and you're letting the fans, eat that up. But also I'm sure there's so many amazing moments that are just sitting in the archives for, you know, down the road that will come out at some point and everyone's going to trip when they get to see that. But that is, it is crazy to think of being as a creative, right. As a photographer, it, are you the only photographer that he's really used right outside of, I'm sure yeah. there's been collaborative efforts too. Yeah. There's been other people, like other people have taken pictures of him, but when it comes to his personal photographer or the, his photographer, I've, I've been, been there from like the only one. That's gotta be a pretty surreal feeling to have gone from shooting some babies, 
You know what I mean? And to have and catch this dude at the gym every once in a while and, and maybe shooting some of the other people that were training that haven't blown up to be as big as him, but like to, to take that role on and, and be in charge of capturing this history. You know what I mean? Because the lifespan of an MMA fighter or a fighter in general is just, it can't be too long. Obviously, this dude's tried to retire a few times, but like it doesn't last that long. So you have a short amount of time and that's a lot of weight to be on your shoulders. Does that ever get, uh, you know, is that, does that ever intimidate you or how do you deal with that pressure? Yeah. And yeah, like it's not like a musician. They have like, you know, they have a long, a long period of time to like a long career. Like yeah, fighting is a very, like it takes it out of your, your body. It takes it out of just every part of you. So it is a very limited sports career, but, um, I just take every, every day. Like it's like, it, like it could be the last. So if you're taking pictures, they have to be the best every time I have to be on my A game every single time. And I don't, because a lot of it is, is the same kind of, so like I've done, it's like a million training sessions we're there to a million of his training sessions and i could just sit there and be like yeah I'll just click away and should we just give him the same he was happy with those last time we'll just do these again right. every single time i try and challenge myself like how can i make this different like like i'm always just thinking about the book i'm just like people aren't just going to flick through or here's more training or here's the same shot again and again so i just try and think what what did we do last time and then what can we do different this time like did i have i used off camera flash have, have we uh like let's slow the shutter speed down like what did we do last time so i always try and change it up and try and make every series of images like every day i try and make it the best images i can but also different from the last day i think a lot of people especially with because it's, it's a full-time job so a lot of people can fall into being comfortable with it and just being like oh yeah cool like this is sorted like you know we're we're, we're getting paid and we're grand but like i just try and challenge myself like as an artist to try and create different something different every single time that that we're out there and i try and not let anything go wasted like this you don't want to miss a moment because like he just he just does so many different things and he's so like he's everywhere and right. you just gotta just be on the ball every single time and try and create different art for him yeah no nah, when you were when you got started with the camera too just to circle back did you have any training in photography or was this a, just picking up the camera and starting to mess around with it was how did that kind of happen i'm curious just to know if you had prior education or if you if this was your education no no so i did i um i went to college and i did uh photographic media here nice. in dublin cool and uh so so that I, I studied it for i got a ba in it like a bachelor's in art right so i did that for three years but the whole time i was doing it doing college i was just like oh yeah cool i'll just take pictures of mma I right. take pictures of sports like and i'll just hand in whatever freelance work i'll get i'll just hand it in as as my projects and the whole way through college my all my friends was like look it's not going to work so like you're not going to make any money doing this like you know this is some mad niche sport that nobody has ever heard about because this is before kind of like it blew up like nobody knew what mma was and i tell i'm doing on mma like is that like that wrestling i'm like yeah, yeah, right. yeah it's, like, it's like that wrestling so uh the whole way time everyone was just like stop doing it like you're not gonna make any money it's oh like go do God. go take pictures of babies and weddings <laughs> like that's 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 how you make money because yeah. it's not like there's not a big thrive in music scene over here either so like you know there's a big it's it's a lot better now than it used to be but there wasn't like you know there was no irish artists that really back in the day that you were going on tour with so like it was kind of if you're being a photographer it was like a press photographer right so like that's kind of, that's the kind of road that you went down like there was a lot of great photographers and artists over here but when it came to making a living you were kind of pushed more towards steady income jobs so i um so yeah i was just doing this and then i just caught the notice of connor and then i just it just blew up and I'm here now, so right. delighted I didn't stop. <laughs> it is so much better, right? <laughs> Not yeah, to, no shame on better. that shit. It's a great way to make a living, but if you have an opportunity or if you feel like you can... Also, um, you know, I mean, like to me, coming up in a small town in Iowa, right? Like that would yeah. be like a go-to job in a small city where you don't have outlets to a lot of celebrities or a lot of big brands or a lot of whatever, big events. We don't even have a pro team from my state in America. So it's like... Um, you, you take those jobs and you build an entire living off of it. People make great living doing that shit, but there's something about, and it's an itch that I feel like we have inside of us. And a lot of the people that are on this podcast that, sh that we all share that common interest. It's like, we just believe in, there's something out there that's going to push us a little bit more. We don't really know what it is, that mystery, but you're going to chase it and try to figure out what it is. And next thing you know, you're fucking shooting the biggest fighter in the world or whatever. <laughs> I'm shooting Beyonce. You know what I mean? Like the shit just doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. Like for such a small, small island, like it's just the limited was, and for, like was such a small, a, a small sport. It was such a small thing that everyone was saying, there's no way, like no one even from Ireland is going to make it to the UFC. Just to, to shoot this profession, you're going to have to go to America. Like you'll have to go to America and get a job. 
Like that's the only way if you want to do this, it's the only way to do it. Like no one ever thought that this random guy from from Crumlin in Dublin was going to blow up and be the face of this sport. And especially in a time when I was there to there to do it. Like my mom is my mom and my girlfriend are my two biggest fans, but even my mom can't believe she's like, How did like how did you <laughs> go from know. shooting in tiny little sports halls like in front of like two, three hundred people to now shooting Conor McGregor like she just she, she can't get over it's it best. but it's crazy just how much how much it's grown yeah, and how man. much like the sport has grown and it's a big a big part of it which it is cool a big part of it is thanks to Conor like you know Conor's blown the sport up and a lot of like the most famous sports images when it comes to MMA are of Conor so it's it's cool to, to kind of to know that I've been along there for, for a piece of history and like in years to come people look back of back at the photographs we've made and they'll be like like they'll be, they'll be it's Muhammad Ali of our era and that's the way I look at it and so that's the way I try and treat it it's yeah. just to make sure that we have timeless timeless images I think too because of him people see that flag so often because of that yeah. you know what I mean in the sport I feel like that's the flag that's most represented and, and you just see it everywhere <laughs> you go that dude wears it it's, it's crazy but um, when uh, so okay going back to when you get to say a major fight um like I, I remember watching, I think this is kind of my, me being so green and, and watching him fight Floyd or box Floyd and then getting to that level and me becoming more aware of MMA and, and the story of why he shouldn't be boxing Floyd and he's not a boxer and he's going to box the best boxer and there's this whole thing, right? When you come to events that are so massive, so well televised all over the world, everyone's paying attention to it. Hundreds of millions of dollars are going back and forth between the parties and shit. How do you, perf you know, you've been training for six, eight weeks, I don't, however long leading up to those. When it gets closer to the event, you're like going to the city wherever the, the fight's going to be. What are you doing to prepare photo wise, uh, making sure that you're getting moments for him and, and the training, but also preparing to, to shoot the actual fight itself? How, how do you prepare for that? And, and any tips that you could provide to photographers that get into that, that arena? Yeah, so for like when it comes when it comes to that, I try and look at it. So I have two setups. I've got a, I always carry carry two cameras. So I've got a, my A seven R Mark three, and then I've got the uh, the A nine. So the A nine, I just think like the, that's my sports camera. We're gonna put a big a big telephoto lens on it, like usually the seventy by two hundred. Mm -hmm. If it's like a press conference or something like that, I'll put the ex the extender on it because that's what I think he's gonna want like he's going to want his, his press photo. So like the way I think of sometimes is I like can competing with, with everyone. So I have to get the press photographs cause that's what he's going to see. So I want my pictures to be able to stand up right beside the press photographs. But then I also want to get the fly in the wall, the documentarian pictures. So I throw the, I throw the zoom lens on to try and get the, the press photographs. So you mm -hmm. want like the, the, where they're square enough to each other, where they're standing on the scales. So you want to be in the press pit for that. Then I always try and so I make sure I just get one or two of them. So then I'm like, right, that's that's checked off. He's going to have his Instagram post. He, he's going to be he's he's good for that point. So then we try. I try and move around and try and capture the feeling of the the energy of the, of the arena. Like people say, like you've never been to a fight till you've been to a Conor McGregor fight. The atmosphere at them is just electric. It's mm. crazy. So I try and really capture that within my my pictures. So I move around into the crowd, try and get crowd shots. Um, when it was the Floyd the Floyd fight, we had we had a lot more free reign. We could like, go and go wherever we want and do whatever we want because like no one was really sure who was in charge. So like <laughs> there was like the boxing, there was UFC. There was, there was Connor, there was Floyd. So that, like, no one was really sure who, who was and wasn't allowed places. So like, Oh yeah, I'm with Connor. They're like, Oh, he's with Connor. Like, All right, on you go. So we could go on the stage. We could have a lot more free access. And then I got like some really intimate, cool pictures of being on stage with the crowds in the background. But for the UFC, it's a lot more, they're a lot more tight. Like, you know, you have to have a media pass and like generally we were Connor, so we don't have media passes. So there's a lot of like finagling around. So I try and get the crowd shots and then, try and get the press photographs in front but then once he goes and back is when I'm like right really, here's a real important photograph because these are pictures that nobody sees and that's what I really want to bring bring out is I want to show people what he's like behind closed doors I want to humanize I want to show that this dude is like he's just not some cage fighting animal you know he's a father he's a he, uh, he's with his girlfriend he's um he's a friend he's a dad he's a, he's a brother you know I'm trying to show it all I'm really trying to humanize Conor McGregor and like that's what I really try and do so that's when I put the big zoom lens away you know I usually have like a 35 on maybe a, maybe a 24 by 70 is usually my go-to just because you never know where, right. where you're going to be I might want to go wide crop in but generally I like to I like to have a 35 that would be my my favorite lens so that's really when I try and 
get on and try and just be a documentarian and try and like, I, I don't really like, if he wants to take a picture, I'll set it up and, you know, I'll move him and we'll like have the light and nice, but I really try and sit back and let, let the story tell itself and just try and capture it. So, um, I think it's like, you're trying to wear two hats. You have to be, you have to get all the press stuff. Cause like, he's going to want that like for the Instagram post. Cause right. at one point I'm there to fulfill a job and there he, he's going to want to put out him looking epic and shredded on the scales. Like he's going to want that. And there's, I'm competing the way I look, I'm competing with 40 other people who's in this, in this press pit. So like I have to somehow get the best picture of him and then, we'll move around. And then once I've gotten that, we're going to move around and try and get all the behind the scenes, the stuff that people don't get to see. Right. So, um, it's, it's challenging, but like, it's, 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 it's good to keep you on your toes. And it's, it's important, I think, to, to, to just constantly challenge yourself. Like I've done loads of weigh-ins now. So I'm like, all right, how am I going to do, do this one different? Like, mm. we'll like, go, oh, we'll go further back into the crowd. We'll get the crowd shot. We'll go right up to the rafters and go wide and try and get all everyone in it. And then when we go on back, we'll, we'll do the same thing. We'll just look for different angles. And cause I'm also there with the, the video crew so like you know we work very well together but at the same time there's booms coming in so i don't want the boom on my picture right. my picture I like i don't want to i don't want to step in front when they're getting getting their shots i can't like step in front of it so we really got to work in, in tandem together but we do it good claymore productions is a well-oiled machine yeah i love that and it's so crucial to have those to have dual cameras so you can just be wielding both of them at the same time and and not have to sit there and change a bunch of lenses i'm sure you brought probably bring do you bring any other lenses besides what's on those two cameras during that yeah yeah i also like um i don't have too many lenses like people ask me all the time like oh well, what what lens is you shoot? what camera did you shoot on so, right I don't know. Like I probably said it somewhere, but like just to get out of the way, I have two cameras. <laughs> I have a seventy by two hundred, a twenty-four by seventy, a fifty, and a thirty-five, and that's it. Oh, Did I got it sixteen by, by was that? sixteen by thirty-five as well. Yeah, but yeah, I never, one. I never use that. I don't even know why I got it. Do you? Do you? And <laughs> do you I, carry um, those? Do you carry those like with you during yeah. this? You were carrying them what in a backpack or or how do you carry them? Yeah, I got a I got a heavy ass backpack. Word. So just just uh, my back is in if you're if you're a professional photographer you know you got back problems mm -hmm. that's how you know you're a professional if you're ever wondering how you know you're professional you have back problems <laughs> yeah, you like i've got carry that heavy ass backpack around with me everywhere right i am um, even when i'm like oh i won't I'll, I'll lighten it up because like i've got my laptop with me all the time because as soon as we're finished as soon as we're finished he's like send me the shots and I'm like, we're still here. We're still at the event. Yeah. Like, how do I have these finished? Right. So like most of the time you see me running around and I have my laptop balanced on my hand and like still I'm like sending him the pictures and he's like, take a snap. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm trying to put it down. I'm trying to get it, get it going. So right. it's like, you just never know he's going to bump into what we're going to do. Like we'll go, we'll go to Wayne and then all of a sudden like Drake is there or someone else is there. So you always have to, always have to be on your toes with it. But yeah, yeah. I just carry around, um, I carry around my, I have my, my two cameras. So if I'm editing one card, I always make sure I have another card loaded, ready to go. So if he says something, I can just You're take it up go. straight away. No messing around. Right. I was trying to explain to him, like anyone, like you can't explain to your boss. Like it's, if, if you're not ready, it's your, it's your fault. And that's the way I look at it. Like, you know, I can't explain to him. I look, look champ, you know, there's export time. There's, there's import times. Like he doesn't care about any of that. He, no. he I'm there to take pictures and yeah. take, like take the pictures, Dave. <laughs> That's, that's, that's what it comes down to. I feel it, it, when you are also shooting these events is there, um, cause I want to go into the Drake story too in a second, but when you are capturing at these events, you know, he has his affiliate deal or, uh, like sponsors and shit. Are you ever thinking, yeah. does, do you ever have to think of content that would work for those sponsors as well? Or is it strictly just kind of whatever you can get for him and he can multi-purpose that content or are you strategizing like, Oh, he's sponsored by this, whatever company I need to think of to, to, to get the shoes or I need to think like, uh, get those textures. Yeah, no, of course. Like he's, he's involved in so many things. So he has his, his he has his clothing brand. So he's August McGregor. He's sponsored by Reebok. So he's his own Reebok combat line. He's got his whiskey. So the whole time I'm thinking, I'm not even thinking about them using it because like, if I take a picture, it's, it's for Connor and like, we like it's his right. so if, if he's going to send some he is but the whole time i know that he has all these brands that he needs to fulfill the deals for mm. so if he's going out i'm like okay have i gotten the detail shot of the the combat line have we gotten that like he's going to go on stage we need to make sure he's wearing his new his new zigs like we need to get the zigs in there like i have i do have checklists that i need to go like okay do we do august mcgregor have have a post that they can do out of this does reebok have a post that they can do out of this do we get the proper 12 in there? If we get the proper 12 while the Reebok, then the two of them can go off each other. They can multi-purpose the images. Right. So the whole time we are, we are thinking that we're trying to make art and trying to be the, like be a documentarian and do this for this larger purpose. But at the same time, 
you got to just always got to remember that he has these brand deals, that he has all this stuff that you just got to be switched on and realize that you need to get all these little things in there so the images can be multi purpose. Right. And like, I, I want to take like this real artistic slow motion and I want all this. And then sometimes it's like, you know what? I just need to get, I just One need to shot. get the Reebok shoes in it. Like, well, and I think that I, makes I'd love you... to take that, but it's not going to happen. I need to get a, a whiskey bottle in focus. Right. So this whole this epic slow motion blur that I planned out isn't going to work this time. Yeah. You got to scrap it and do it later. I think that makes yeah. you an incredible asset and creators need to be thinking like that because a lot, you have to understand that these people have their affiliations and that they have to, you know, contribute in some way. And if you can go and find an ill way to, to capture those brands, at the same time you're capturing your documentarian job, doing all of your deliverables for that, that goes a long way and that can make you stand out when, when working with someone like this, which obviously is why he's kept you around, just overall talent and being able to think outside the box for, for those types of deliverables. Yeah, it's one thing, like, especially for young photographers and people coming up, that you, you've got to remember, is like, because people ask me, how did, how did I get the job? Because there was loads of photographers, loads of people in Ireland you could have picked from. But like one thing that I thought that would separate me is like, I'll get his pictures, but I'll also show him what we can do with, with other pictures. So like get a picture of the headphones. He has a beat sale. And I'm like, okay. So I went on and looked at what, what is he sponsored by? Who sponsors him? What does he use? And went on to his social medias. What are you tagging? Oh, he's tagging beats. Does he have a beat still? Like, I don't know. Does he have a beat still? But can we make content that he can then show beats? This is mm. what we can do. Yeah. So like, it's just all little things like that. I'm looking like, what, what is he wearing? Like, how can we, how can I make sure that I'm getting the most amount of content and usability out of my photographs? So you got to have two kind of hats on. You got to have, you can't just go in there going, I'm going to take all these epic, like uh, documentary and photographs and that's it. Cause at the end of the day, whoever you work for might, they might love that. And perfect. Then you struck gold. But most of the time you're going to have a manager or someone messaging you just saying, Oh, did you get this? Do you have a do you have any pictures of that? Or even months down the line, like you mightn't have, mightn't have had a beat still, but months down the line, do you have any photos of him wearing beats? Sure do. Here you go. And right. I know I have those because I know I've seen him wearing these. So let's get it. Like you might be wearing anything and he might have nothing to do. And I'm making sure that if that's something that I've noticed of something that that's trending, let's get that just in case. No, of course. And that, and that sets you up to get, you know, you probably could get paid off of that later when they want to, Oh, Hey, we want to commission you for our cover of whatever. And you, because you have this photo of him wearing these beats, I don't know where Susan beats as an example, but yeah, yeah, he's wearing these beats example, headphones yeah. or whatever. And now all of a sudden you're getting commissioned like, all right, cool. We're going to license that photo. Or maybe Connor will set you up to be like the cover shoot or cover uh, photographer for yeah. this and that. It, there's a lot of things that can come from that. That's a great point. I love that shit. Doo -doo. Hello, this is Ben the host of this podcast episode. I hope you're enjoying this episode with Dave Fogarty. It's been pretty cool so far. Uh, what I wanted to tell you about is that we have a contest coming this Wednesday for video editors. So if you're a video editor and you want to get involved in this contest, we highly recommend you check out the episode that's coming out this Wednesday with all the details. We'll also share that information on our Instagram at Blackwood No Cream. Okay, let's get back to the episode. See you Wednesday. All right, so like when you're working, you know, you, you get this backstage access and Connor is so, so famous that, you know, just every musician, every actor, every athlete, they all know him and probably are friends with them or, or acquaintances. So you get a lot of opportunities to, sh to shoot other people. So like for the Drake instance, uh, Drake comes back in the room and, and you've built this trust with Connor that he's allowing you to obviously photograph these moments. What's, what's your approach when, when you do see talent and have the opportunity to shoot other talent outside of Connor or with, with Connor? Yeah. So the way, the way I look at it is that, um, I built up this huge trust with Connor and that I know what Connor wants and I know the boundaries and like we built this up together. So, but when it comes to other people, I'm like, well, this person doesn't know me. Like they don't know, straight away that I'm Connor's guy and like that, that, that it's fine that like, you know, Connor won't release any, any bad pictures. So like, you got it, you just got to treat every, every, you just got to like, kind of use your cop on. So mm -hmm. when Drake comes in for like, we use Drake, for example, when he came in, I knew straight away that like, right, let Connor and Drake have their interaction. Let Drake settle into the environment. Don't just come straight up and throw a camera in his face and try and get a picture for Instagram. You got to let him settle in and like, no, okay. Everybody in here is cool. Like he's obviously with Connor. Like he can, Drake can see me interacting with Connor. So he's like, okay, he's, he's okay. And that's when he grabbed the flag mm. and he was like, oh yeah, yeah, let's get this picture. And like grabbed the flag and stood, stood behind Connor. And that's when we got that picture and we got like loads of other great pictures with Drake. We only got those is because like I let Drake settle into the environment. You can't just be going in and throwing the camera into his face straight away, just trying to get, 
like get get this picture for yourself. You just got to like use your cop on and know that these, like they are celebrities, but they're also people. So you can't just be like you, you walk in somewhere and someone's all of a sudden like a big flash in your face. You're going to be like, what, like what's going on? And you're going to be put on the back step. You want to let them settle in and be na- be natural because you want to get those natural photographs. Just having a bad picture of Drake, you're like oh I have this I have this this great picture of Drake, but no, you don't. You just have a picture of Drake. Right. It's a terrible picture. He looks uncomfortable. He's pointing at someone to ask who you are. Like like that's that's not a good picture. <laughs> It's like it's, it's a weird. There's a weird energy to it. You got to let them settle in. Right. And that's what I do every time. It's like we we go we're in mad places and and kind of bumps into people. They also got to just let them settle in. Let them realize that I'm not just some paparazzi. Mm-hmm. That I'm with Connor. That these like that they're okay. That nothing is going to be released. Like that they don't want it. And then even without saying that, they they realize after if, after a minute or two, like okay, this is Connor's guy. Like okay. I kind of stick out like this is ginger guy he kind of looks a bit like kind of he they must be together <laughs> yeah. so it kind of works to my advantage a little bit more people like click onto it a bit sooner right. but I just like I usually just stand back and I'm like oh how's it going like like sometimes I'll introduce myself like how's it going I'm Dave I'm Connor's guy like you know don't worry about it like if you see me floating around it's like just just be cool and most of the time and especially nowadays loads of people have their own photographers so they're all kind of cool with it like they all realize that like okay that's he's kind of this guy and then you just gotta let him settle into the into the environment and then you just get the best pictures out yeah, of it well that's um, what i found in my experience that's that's what i found no, the best. same here same here it's it, to me it, you're developing the trust obviously as soon as they understand your connor's guy that that comes with the level of expertise so they're going to trust you now to be the person that's going to capture a, a solid image but also that you understand privacy and trust and there's no reason he'd be bringing someone that's just going to fling, you know, internet shots out to Instagram yeah. real quick just because. So you build that trust. And I think that's great. What about, um, what about the story with Mike Tyson? Like you got to shoot Mike Tyson. You got a really ill shot. Yeah. Mike Tyson. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Tell that, that story. Yeah. That was, that, that was, that was a random one. So I, um, I was just sitting at home and then like, like all my work stories start off. I just got to text from Connor. It's like going to go, going to buzz to see Mike Tyson. I was like, yeah, all right. Yeah, cool. Let's go. So we go down and uh, uh, we, we go down and we go in the back and Mike Tyson's given like a talk in Dublin. So we go in and, and Mike's people, I don't know whether they his actual people or the people putting on the event, but they were real cagey. They were real like, you know, oh, d- d- don't take any pictures of Mike. Don't go and take any videos. And like, you know, they were just being real weird. So we're like, okay. And so Connor, so they bring Connor in to, to talk to Mike. So Connor, so we're just standing outside in the hallway and we're like, this is weird. This usually never happens to us, but we're like, yeah, okay, cool. So we're just standing there. And then he kind of pokes his head out and goes, yeah, come on in, come on in, it's grand. So we go in and Mike Tyson is smoking, smoking a big blunt. And I'm like, this is, this is mental. This is Mike Tyson. <laughs> this is the heavyweight champ. This is the champ. Like this is Mike. Yeah. Over and same thing. I just let them have their intro. I don't go even in thing like that. Like I've been called to come in to take pictures. Guys. So I don't just run in and start blasting the flash ever. I go in and let them have their little talk. Same thing. And then I start taking pictures. Let them see me. Like I introduce myself. I go, how's it going, Mike? Like huge fan just let them let them do their thing and then I stand back let them have their interactions and then I start Mike sees me sees my camera knows what I'm there for so he starts settling in he's more comfortable so he's like okay so we start taking just start taking a picture took a picture of him and Connor little little portrait together like nothing to write home about this little hand around each other it's like sure. perfect and then Mike has seen me he's comfortable now he knows what I'm there for so he takes a big hit of his of the blunt and I could see from the way he was smoking it the first time, because he was smoking and talking to Connor, that he does the French exhale where he lets him come out his mouth and up his nose. Yeah. And I, was like, that, I was like, that would be such a great picture. And I was like, I'll just put the flash on. And he's seeing me, because he, he's, he's seeing what he's doing, so he's like, okay, he's comfortable now. He knows what's going on. So he does it, maintains eye contact with the camera and does the big French inhale as I get that picture. And like we were in that room for, say, about four or five minutes at most. <laughs> and then, then we we'll, we'll so back iconic. out. And then I just carry on. We just keep taking pictures. And it wasn't until I got home. I was sitting at home editing my pictures. And I was like, holy shit, I have a fucking portrait of Mike Tyson smoking a blunt. I was like, this so is, and this is before. It's kind of more people have gotten him now. But this is like when he was only launching his weed. This is before there was loads of shots of Mike Tyson smoking grass. That's so dope. I was like, this is unreal. Yeah. I was like, show my girlfriend. I was like, look at this. I was like, this, this is Mike Tyson. <laughs> I was like, this is the most random picture in the whole world. I was like, this is brilliant. I love that. That's, I that's the only photo that you have for print in your shop right now. <laughs> there's more coming there's there more, more coming. coming the print shop has been long neglected there's, yeah. a, there's a lot more prints coming oh, I'm excited to see that man what when you, when you have these opportunities to you know be around these other people have you have you de- I, I know you're so busy with Connor has this led to other job opportunities for you outside of Connor just by being his guy obviously and then being around and meeting other brands or artists or, or celebrities and so on yeah so um, 
so I've gotten I shot I shot for the Migos when they came to Ireland their uh, their management just got onto me I think it was before they had a traveling photographer and uh, it was I don't think they had anyone and I just I had happened to meet the I'd met the Migos when they first came the first time they had come to Dublin and it was actually before that so uh, we had a mutual friend with their manager their mm. tour manager and uh, they just got onto me and just said look look we're coming to Dublin would you like would you be up for shooting the show and I was like yeah of course so That's dope. so we got connected with them so they invited me in so I I, I shot the whole show. Um, got a got like it's kind of same thing. I got like great by, like behind the scenes footage before they went out, and I shot then then we shot the show, and then they knew. I think it was just because it kind of looked like Connor. They uh, they were like, oh, "Are you Connor's brother?" Like, and I was like, well, "No." Like, do you think we all look the same here? Right. And I was like, "No." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Yeah." Like, you know, I work for him. So like, oh, where is he? And he had actually forgotten his wallet. So I was like, "He's on the way." So they were like, "Okay," but they were leaving. So they gave me their contact, and they're like, "If Connor wants to come to the studio." let us know we'd love to have him in the studio and it was, it was when Quavo was making his debut album so they were going so I'd actually I like I don't know anything about music like, but I had somehow got a message from them saying can you find us a studio and I was like okay yeah. so I was like oh yeah okay and I was like I don't know like, wait like, do we even have recording studios <laughs> yeah. in Dublin so I found them one sent it on and then when we did that they asked us to come back so we ended up spending a night in, in the studio with Quavo as he was recording his uh his debut album which was which was dope so it was cool That's to get awesome. to see that at the same time the same festival I shot Post Malone no, I didn't shoot I hate when people say I oh, I shot for Post Malone you didn't shoot for Post Malone you, you shot, shot Post, Malone. Post Malone right alright there's a, there's a big difference yeah of so course I, yeah I, I got I I had the, the all access, so I got to shoot on stage That's with dope. Post, like Post Malone's performance. That was good. Um, I've worked with like big companies, like OnePlus. There, um, I don't know. Do you have one? I think you have OnePlus in America. The phones. I don't so know. Big in Asia. I don't know yet. I saw. I saw the the cool. They did like a cool spot about you, and, and you were like running around and taking photos and shit. And I was like, well, I've never heard of the phone. Yeah, so they uh, they're big in Asia, really like big in in um, I think they are like outsell Apple in Asia. They're really big, they're really big there. So they just they just hit me up and seeing my work and just said, look, we're doing this this campaign on OnePlus and on their phones because they the cameras on the phones are super good, like super good. Yeah. They have like a pro mode where you can do like you can do everything from like white balance to ISO exposure, um, like f stops. You can do shutter speed. It's brilliant. They're great. They're great camera That's phones. Dope. So they're saying we have this new phone launch and would you be interested in being and I was like oh like what do you want me to take pictures and they're like no we want you to to be the face of it I was like oh that's yeah dope. cool let's do it that's fucking so awesome it, that these that things like this will roll in you know what I mean like that's the best part about it is that sometimes people will turn the camera on you and I think that sharing your story is going to inspire think about all the other photographers that are in Ireland alone wishing that they could be Connor's photographer or wish maybe doubting themselves, not knowing that it's possible to be able to go above and beyond and, and leave this town that you're from and, and go to travel the world and capture some of the most iconic moments. You know what I mean? Like that shit's inspiring. And I love it when people will turn the camera on, on the creators. I think that's so cool. Yeah, it was cool. The OnePlus it was a cool campaign came off really well. Like the, it was a Finnish company to the production company did it like they were super good like the, the video came out amazing like yeah. it was shot over like it was, we did it all in two days it mm. was just like we did it in Ireland and like all over the place That's it was dope. it was unreal it was a really cool video and it was really really cool and I really like being being linked with with OnePlus they're like a big a big brand and it's really cool to to do work for them and like hopefully continue to keep doing work for yeah. uh, for OnePlus That's dope I uh I think ra- wrapping this getting closer to it I, I I'm curious to know this so this is what's interesting is like you said earlier, working with musicians, they have this long, long, long history of, of a career generally, and they make music for years and years to come. With fighting, it's much shorter. There's so much wear and tear in your body. Connor has announced retirement like three different times in like the last four years. Like you say, he's done so a couple different times. So for you, how do you deal with that? Especially, I know he's developing the production company, so maybe that's where you're, you guys are pivoting and creating the longevity there. Like, How do you plan to create your longevity as a photographer, especially if he's... Uh, he just he retired again right like he's retired right now <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 he's retired yeah yeah so we, uh he's enjoying his retirement i'm sure he is yeah it's gonna be awesome <laughs> but like what do you what do you do as a photographer when you know your the talent that you work with is done doing what they do obviously he's got other endeavors but i'm curious to hear like what are your plans moving forward and how do you stay uh consistently working 
so for for me when it comes to when it comes to the fighting that like oh because at the start I was like oh what's he gonna do what am I gonna do when he retires because like you know you can't fight forever and like like you're saying it's such a small window but I think Conor has become so big that he's much more than just fighting now like we have done so much with him that like we've done the whiskey campaigns we've done two two whiskey campaigns for him we've shot him for GQ we've done the look books for his for his clothing brand so that's what I really want to do we're, yeah, we're the production company's really ramping up with you know, getting a lot of good stuff for Claymore Productions. So that's what we're kind of branching off towards. Like all our content won't be about Connor, won't even be focusing around Connor. Mm. But we want to use that platform to continue to grow and continue to boost our, our, our careers. So um, I'd like to do a, like a lot more. I'd like to come into a bit more advertising. I'd like to do a lot, lot more campaigns. I think even we've got, I've got a few with him coming up. Like I'd really like to work with some big bands like Reebok. Like I've done, I've done stuff with them, but I've never been their primary shooter. So right. I really want to, really want to like more branch towards doing more advertising images, do more of the the campaigns. I have a few um, proper twelve coming up. We've August McGregor is is going from strength to strength. So I think with the power of the production company and and with all his endeavors around him, I think there's going to be a, a bit of a life left in in the career. Yeah, even when when he does when he's finished fighting. Like it's, the fighting's only a small part of, of what he is now. He's right. just so so, so much bigger, and I think I can branch out myself and and do and do this like because I can do this. It's like I, I like I love working for Connor. It's 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 amazing we get to see all these these places. But like I would like to to shoot like a a campaign for for someone like Nike Off White. So some companies like that. So and Connor's kind of been nothing but supportive. He's always he's always behind us. Like he's always pushing us to to, to do better. And when he come when he come to him for something like that, he's just like, yeah, of course. He's yeah. like, like That's you awesome. do you. Like you know, he's always says he's like, I never I never stop you making money. Yeah, right. So he uh, and he's always behind us. He pushes us. Like you know, he he supports us. I did the campaign for for Proper Twelve. He, like the, with the proper ginger. He loved it. Like he thought it was gas. So it's good. <laughs> it's good to have. It's good to have the support of him behind us. But you know, and what's good about working for someone someone like him is he's not afraid. Like if 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 we don't get the shot, or we don't get stuff. He's not afraid to tell us. Like he'll like he'll he'll tell us that. The, the shit like right. <laughs> give him pictures and he's like oh you missed it he's like you missed it and it's like oh shit like and then he pushes you to to to, to go and to, and to do better and just to never never settle and never do never plateau you always got to be moving up no matter what you what you're doing That's even a- if you're starting off you just got to keep keep leveling up keep trying to look at new ways that you can improve like because people say to me like are you shooting the same person all the time does it not get boring and i'm like no it never gets boring because i'm shooting the same person but in so many different ways like right. I've, I've shot him everywhere i've shot him on a roller coaster i've shot him while the two of us have been on jet skis i've shot him everywhere so i'm like yeah it's the same subject but what we do with him so much more that it's given me such a well-rounded base now that like i can do i know i can do product photography i can do advertising shots i can do fashion with him we can do sports i can do documentary i know i can do all this because i've done it with him yeah who the fuck is asking if that gets but what are you talking about (laughs) what do you mean does that get more are you crazy this is is brilliant (laughs) yeah you're always on your toes plus he sounds like the illest mentor you know i mean someone that will push you that will make you know when you if you're slacking or miss you missing opportunities or or contributing with this vision is so helpful when you're creating for someone that has that that's awesome i i I, i've when we wrap these, I've been trying to do this. I sometimes I forget, but I think this is a great point to end on. Um, is what do you think out of all of the, the lessons you've learned and, and the ways you've contributed to Connor? What do you think it is that um, Connor sees and, and and likes about you that makes him want to work with you? What is it like? At least one trait that you offer that that makes him just gravitate towards you. I, I think there's there's probably like. This, this too. The first major one applies to anything. Is just being sound. It's just being a nice guy and easy to get along with. That is the number one rule for any photographer, any videographer. You want to go on tour. You want to do anything. You have to be easy to get on with. Mm-hmm. Like you can be the best photographer in the world, take all these amazing shots, and if you're like, if you're just not, if you're just not easy to get along with, if you're always a problem. No one's going to want to work with you. Right. Like you have to, you have to get along with everyone. Like, you know, that is because you're part of like, it's not all, it's not all about you. Right. So you have to get, you have to get on with everyone. So just being nice is uh, like just being sound and easy to get on with is, a, is a big one. Like, yeah, go, like you'd be surprised about how far it actually, it actually goes of just being, being sound and mm-hmm. getting, getting on with. And then the other one is understanding your subject. Like, if you're, if you're a music photographer, so if you're, if you shoot hip hop, 
and you want to be a hip hop photographer, you have to know about hip hop. You have to know about the the back history of hip hop photography. Where does it come from? What has come before you? No, like you can't just go into this going, oh, I love music, so you're going to do, do music photography. Like I studied all of Muhammad Ali's pictures. Mm. So all of them, I studied all the like great documentary photographers, like, like just really dived into it. Know the back history of photography, looking at people like Annie Leibovitz, looking like um, Howard Bingham, just looking at all these different types of photographers and like, how can I bring this into what I'm doing? How can I make Connor walking down the street, look like a fashion shoot? Like, how can I make this look like a documentary with him just sitting there? Like, how can I make these things look the way I want them to look? And that's by doing it, by knowing what are the rules of fashion photography? What are the rules of documentary photography and applying them to what I do? So if you're into music, if you're into hip hop, you have to look at the back issue, you look at people who have come before you and even people are doing it now. Just look, like take inspiration is the number one thing. Have your own style, but let it be influenced by people. I, I think is the, the biggest one. Shit. Couldn't say it better myself, my friend. You fucking just killed that shit. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, dude, this was, I'm so glad that we were able to do this. I know we try to do this a million different times whenever you're in LA. Yeah. I'm like, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. But you're a busy man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, the, the worst thing is I was just sitting around most of the time. It's like, oh, I'm going to go do this. And then it was like, oh, I'm going to go here. And it's like, oh, okay. I'm going to sit around. It, it, I <laughs> but I will, it. we'll get, we'll get, we'll get down on that. I want to see. I want to see the studio. It looks great from here. It looks yeah, great on there. Thank you. I'm not gonna lie. I'm more of an audio listener myself. The, you know, I am I too. I am too. Don't I don't, I don't indulge in the um, on the YouTube too much. I do. I do subscribe though. You know, I got to show the love. I do subscribe. I appreciate on YouTube. you for that. Nah, you're like, you're a fucking legend, yeah. and you're active in I the Facebook see. community, bro. Like I love that. I see you posting yeah. in there and shit. Like that. That means the world to me. And and honestly, like he said, if you are listening on audio, our beautiful faces are up here on YouTube. So you fucking hop on on board and subscribe as well. You know, what get I mean? on. No, nah, get um, on. Follow Black with No Cream. Yes. Get on the community. The community is great. Even I just be going on just looking at what like people I've never heard of. Just Insane looking at the talent. stuff like, you know, you don't have to be a huge name. You know, like like Instagram, I don't see everything. But on Black with No Cream, I nearly see everything. Like Because yeah. like, I'm never on Facebook. The only reason I'm going on Facebook is to look on Black with No Cream. I know, right? So I go on, I see the group and see people interacting. It's great to see. And no, that's, that's awesome. Great. Keep it up, man. That's why I'm glad we're doing shit like this. Because if we can feed this back to the community and people can hear your story, man, you never know who this shit's going to inspire. So hopefully, hopefully this hits for at least one person I feel like you know we got a bunch of people listening so I think people are going to love this but uh, yeah. stay safe and now people there, know what cameras I have people know now what cameras and lenses know. I have so please please stop asking me please <laughs> it's my only it's my only it's my only only request is please stop asking me it's what cameras I use I know you got to make it like an auto now now your auto response should yeah. just be a link to this episode that's it yeah. boom what do you use, use a one plus <laughs> yeah, right there you go yeah get that <laughs> um, no dog stay safe we appreciate you man and we'll, we'll talk soon me stay safe all right later player see you later man thanks that's it for episode 195 huge shout out to dave for coming on the show all the way from dublin ireland that's pretty dope across the pond black window cream podcast be talking to people from all over the world you feel me make sure to subscribe to black window cream on whatever podcast platform you are listening to we appreciate that if you really support the podcast and you want to connect with us for updates on future episodes and find out ways that you can get involved in the growth of black window cream shoot us a text message 319-209-90 Four, one, or hit the link in the description. It's way easier. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That shit helps us grow the podcast. That's always awesome. I know you guys message me and tell me like how much you love the episodes, but if you could just do that on that on that section of Apple Podcasts, even if you don't fucking use it, that shit helps us grow. It's like a Yelp review. You feel me? But they don't have Yelp for podcasts. That would be smart if they did. Uh, that's it. Follow us on Instagram at Black Cream and uh, enjoy the work week. Keep creating. We'll see you in a few days. You bitch. bitch.